Hello and welcome, welcome to a Let's Build Computers. Um, this is my Cooler Master Master Keys Pro S um, and this has been my daily keyboard for about two years now. I did a review when I bought this keyboard and I've been using it happily ever since. Um, as you can see it's full RGB backlight keyboard that's not very bright under all the bench lights but whatever. Um, and um, I've really enjoyed having this keyboard. It's, uh, it's a mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX Brown switches in it. Um, and uh, I've also fitted it with O-rings, which I did in another vi video as well, which makes it, you know, as quiet as a mechanical keyboard is going to get. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty good. And one of the things I love about this keyboard is the fact that it doesn't require any software to do any of its keyboard, fun uh, any of its macro functions or any of its uh, LED functions, which is a lot to me because one of the things that I really dislike about a lot of RGB kit these days is you've got to run software on it. And a lot of people, unless you're a brand snob and you stick to one brand rigidly, you end up with like three or four different clients running on your computer for your mouse and your keyboard and your your, your internal case lighting. And I don't want to do that. Uh, so anyway, I love, I love my keyboard. However, it's getting a bit grotty, you know, over, uh, although I, I do give it a dust with a, um, uh, with a paintbrush now and then and stuff like that, but I've never actually given this thing a proper deep clean and it shows. And additionally to that, um, the keycaps are just, they're just wearing out a little bit and they've got this shiny tint to them, which I don't like at all. They look worn out and they've got that sort of grippy, shiny gloss feel to them that I don't like. And this really came to a head um, the other day when I was doing some testing on a Game Max Strike RGB keyboard that I currently have in full review. Um, and um, uh, although the Game Max Strike was not quite as refined as this was, but then it's half the price, um, one of the things that I did notice was that its keycaps had this wonderful matte texture on that I really liked. And they're not exotic keycaps, but I just really liked that. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to buy new keycaps for my keyboard. Um, I'm going to buy some new keycaps and just renew this keyboard and just freshen it up a bit. Make it feel like a, a you know, make it feel like a million bucks, so to speak. So I did. Here's a bag of keycaps. So I'm going to talk to you about these keycaps for a bit and, that, you know, what I bought and why I bought them. And then we're going to go through and we're going to take all of the keys off of this keyboard clean out the inside, put the new keycaps on with my O-rings, and we'll have a nice refurbished keyboard that's going to feel like I just took it out the box. So let's get started. So here's a comparison of um, the new and the old keycaps. These, the, this is the original control keycap um, from my master keys, and this is one of the replacement ones I bought. Now, first of all, the replacement keycaps that I've purchased, uh, I bought a really cheap set. Um, I will uh, uh, I'll add in an overlay of what I purchased because I can't remember it off the top of my head now I'm actually recording this. Um, however, I bought a really cheap set and you can buy expensive sets and you can buy them in all kinds of colors um, and designs and stuff like that. But I didn't want to do anything particularly flashy with this keyboard. I was looking to see if there are any um, sort of designs or colors that caught my eye. But a lot of the colors... Um, a lot. The keyboard fandom seems to have a thing with very retro looking stuff um, and that kind of thing. And it's not my cup of tea. I don't dislike it, but it's not what I want on my desk when I have an incredibly modern looking setup on my desk, you know. So I ended up just buying just a set of black keycaps. And as I said, I bought a really cheap set. It cost me 10 quid on Amazon and it literally came in this bag like this. So, uh, so yeah, I've just got a bag of keycaps. Um, so despite being a cheap set, they are double shot keycaps and uh, that is an important thing because I'll show you what difference that makes. So um, when you're buying keycaps, uh, there's often two, di you will often see this term double shot. Um, and what that means is if we have a look at this original one, if I turn that round, as you can see, it's m injection molded plastic and it's injection molded um, translucent plastic. And if I grab a torch and we shine a torch through that, as you can see, it shines through because the main bulk of the plastic is um, translucent. However, in order to then get the black finish, they've literally just more or less just spray painted it to all intent and purpose. It's probably a bit more exotic than that, but it's essentially been spray painted. Um, and you can see that because you can see just the, the paint bleed around the edge there. 
And that means that um, if I had long fingernails or something like that, or just given enough time, eventually I'll start scratching that paint off. And you know, if I grab um, if I grab a sharp implement like my tweezers, and if I just gently just go, oh look at that, it's pretty tough actually. Credit where it's due. Ah. Uh, well, I was expecting to be able to scratch through that, but um, this keycap is actually pretty darn tough. So that just goes to show that just because your keycaps aren't double shot, it doesn't mean they're completely trash. However, um, it's quite common to see non-double shot keycaps um, on cheaper keyboards or laptops. Like I've got another keyboard that I have an example here. Uh, this is also a backlit keyboard. And if we pop the control key off of it, um, you'll also see that this one Again, it's a backlit keyboard, so if I shine a torch through it, you can see that it's um, shine through, as it's known as. Uh, and once again, if we have a look at the back of it, as you can see, uh, it's clear plastic. So um, that, again, is not a double shot key. Um, and given time, longer fingernails will eventually just scratch away at the surface of that. And eventually you'll get that just a white mark around where it used to say control. Um, and uh, this is more prominent on uh, more prominent on ladies' laptops because ladies tend to have long fingernails. But you know, other people can have long fingernails too. So you know, uh, you just get marks appear on laptops. I see that quite commonly at work. Um, but yeah, in this instance, um, these uh, uh, these ones that I've got on my Cool Master are actually pretty tough. However, uh, again, if we look at some of the more commonly used keys like my spacebar, you can see where it's just gone a bit shiny there, and it's just got a naff look to it. Now, comparison. Here is one of the new ones. Now this is a double shot keycap. And if I turn this one over, as you can very clearly see, it's two part injection molded. They've made a black keycap and then they've later injection molded the stem and the clear bit on the inside. So again, it's still shine through, um, but it's actually two parts. So this black section is actually solid plastic. Uh, and that means that no matter how much you scratch away at this, that will never that coating will never come off because you've got to go through one mil of plastic to get there. So that's what it means when you have double shot keycaps. Um, so uh, just because I mean, again, as I, I expected that to scratch really easily and that surprised me. So not having double shot keycaps is not the end of the world. However, double shot is technically superior um, now. Just because these are double shot, that doesn't mean that these are mega good quality. Uh, if I grab another keycap, which I've now just put to one side and lost, here's the page down keycap that's come in my set. And firstly, you can see because this is a cheap set, we've got some burrs on this. So the build quality is not stupendous. However, this entire key set was like 10 pounds. And it's quite common for a set of keys to cost, you know, 20, 30, maybe 40 pounds. So, you know, that's like 50 or 60 dollars. For the Corsair ones, which personally I think are quite overpriced, but whatever. However, the Corsair ones are not going to have those burrs on them. Make of that what you will. But also, you'll notice here, this page down, you can see where it's got a bit of a spray paint effect on it, where they've got that little stem going onto the inside of the D to support the inside edge. You know, that again is where these are fairly cheaply manufactured keys, so the font on them looks a little bit weird. But personally, as I say, after using this Game Max keyboard that I'm pretty certain has these exact keycaps, I wasn't really bothered by that because I'm not really looking at the font all the time. But I really like that scratchy feel under my fingers. I really liked that. Some people might look at that and go, oh, no, I don't want that on my keys. Get that out of my face. But I quite liked it. So as I say, I thought I'd spend 10 quid on these new keycaps. And that also means that I don't have to physically clean all of my old keycaps, which I could do. I could take all of these, stick them in the um, uh, sink and clean them up. And I've done that before. Some One of my very early videos was uh, cleaning up a liquid spill on one of my old keyboards. Uh, and I cleaned all the keys caps individually. But anyway, I digress. The point is, these could be cleaned up, but I want some shiny new ones. And it's going to make my keyboard feel nice and new again. Uh, so then the last thing of note as well is, again, if we look at the back, you can see where I've got my O-rings fitted to my old keycaps there. So these guys are all going to have to come out. Um, so if I just grab that guy out with a pair of tweezers, it's a very simple rubber O-ring. 
Um, and uh, yeah, you can buy these, you can buy packs of these O-rings super cheap on eBay. It's well worth doing in my opinion. It doesn't make your keyboard silent. Um, I'm not, you know, there's lots of people that'll be like, oh, they're really quiet and stuff like that. It's just like, they're not. Mechanical keyboards are noisy unless you completely relearn how to touch type. Um, for example, uh, the reason why your keycaps make a noise is when it's what's known as bottoming out the key, where the keystroke, let's bring the keyboard back in, whereas when that, key, when that key goes all the way down to the bottom and hits the bottom of the travel, the keycap is going to slam onto the key, so you get that distinctive clack noise. Um, and if I remove the key, if I remove the O-ring, uh, let's take that out. So now with no O-ring, you can hear that the one without the O-ring has that much higher pitched clack on it. So it dampens it slightly. This is fairly, this is a fairly tough tap I'm giving it. But you can hear that it just cuts some of the highs off of it. Now, in order to make a, a mechanical keyboard, theoretically would be silent if you didn't bottom out the key. So if I just depress this, it makes virtually no noise at all. However, the problem is, is because we've all, most of us at any rate, have grown up on uh, membrane keyboards like this one. Uh, and as you can see in Install the Grut, you've got a rubber membrane at the bottom there. Now, rubber membrane keyboards, you have to bottom out the key in order for it to actuate. That's how it works. When you strike the bottom of it, um, you've got plastic layers down there, and the two plastic layers have uh, carbon contacts on them that touch, which activates the key. So we've all grown up learning to type on membrane keyboards where you must bottom out the key for it to activate. So in order to learn how to silently type on a mechanical keyboard without bottoming out the key, you have to completely relearn to type, basically. So that's why mechanical keyboards are noisy. Uh, it's not because they're flawed or they're inherently noisy, it's because we're doing it wrong. Um, so yeah, and I'm sure there's probably going to be, there's probably various people out there that are actual touch typists and don't bottom out their keys and thus type nice and quietly. Anyway, let's take all these keycaps off. We go that's all the old ones off and it's pretty gross down here i'll tell ye that much <clears throat> gross the next thing i need to do now is i need to clean the deck so to speak um so uh i'm going to do that with um uh firstly i'm just going to get a paintbrush just an ordinary paintbrush and i'm just gonna just dust out all the grit then I'll go over it with my airline as well uh, and then we'll see what's left over then I'll probably go over the whole thing with some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush just to really clean that up so um, uh, let's get started on that Okay, right, that's after the blowout, and um, it's looking better. Uh, it looks nicer on camera than it does in real life, I can tell you that much. Uh, however, you can see we've got lots of schmutz around here. So I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol, and I'm just going to spray it. Um, I'm going to spray it onto the brush. Uh, normally for electronics, I spray IPA directly onto the board. Um, however, 
Uh, I'm not sure how good it is to get the alcohol into the switches. Don't know how much they'll appreciate that, so I'm going to avoid it. Wow, this toothbrush is doing nothing. Let me try my other toothbrush. Oh, it's getting there, but I think we're going to need something tougher than that. Yeah, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to dry out that alcohol. Just going to use the um, the paintbrush. Um, and I'm going to go in there with some uh, glass cleaner instead. Um, glass cleaner. Whoops. So glass cleaner, so just Tesco window and glass or Windex or Windoline or whatever you want to use. Um, it's got a bit more, I don't want to say soap, um, but it's it's got more cleaning elements in it. So it will actually clean up this, um, this grot uh, much better than the alcohol will. Um, it, however, it doesn't evaporate as quickly as the alcohol does. So this, you can use this on electronics, just alcohol is better. However, if alcohol is not giving you the cleaning action you need, then glass cleaner probably will. Yeah, that's cutting through that now. There we go. Okay, right, so I'm gonna systematically go across the whole deck now. It's quite difficult to get like the hairs out and stuff like that though. This bit is harder than I thought it was gonna be. Paintbrush for quick dry. Actually, I'm going to airline this again to dry that out. There we go. That's much better than it was. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so now I need to go through all of the old keycaps uh, and remove my O-rings from them so I can put them on my new keycaps. So, off we go. If I was doing this all the time, I'd probably just have spare packs of O-rings. They're not expensive. However, I don't have any O-rings and I want to get this done in one sitting. So I'm going to actually steal these O-rings and reuse them. Okay. New keycaps. I'm going to put all of my old ones in the bag that the new ones came in. And then I can keep those just in case. And then this time in a year or so, I'll find this bag of keycaps and be like, why the hell have I still got these? Although it's worth noting, one thing that, these, uh, that the old keycaps will have that the new ones don't have is... Uh, for example, it'll have function modes like there's my volume up key on page up. My new keycaps won't have those markings on them. So it's kind of reliant on me just remembering the, uh, the shortcuts for my keyboard. But that's, uh, that's not a problem. I'm sure it'll all come back. Okay, now I've got to put O-rings on the new ones. So some people use a pair of tweezers for fitting O-rings. I find it's easier to do this bit by hand. Uh, you don't need to worry about pushing the O-ring all the way down to the bottom of the stem because when you actually push the key onto the keyboard, um, it'll just get forced down to the end of the stem anyway. So. Okay, right, I have run out of O-rings. And the reason why I've run out of O-rings is there's actually more keys in the new pack. So firstly, um, what I've neglected to re remember is that uh, my new set, 
This has obviously got the numpad keys in it as well, which I don't have on my keyboard. And in addition to that, um, because these are is because this is a universal set. Notice how I've got uh, multiple different um, I've got multiple different modifier keys here. I've got a US enter key and I've got a UK style return key. So obviously I've got a UK layout keyboard, so I'm going to use this, but I'm not going to use this. So that guy goes it back in the bag. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fit what keys I've got, and then I'll have just a couple left over that still need uh, O-rings putting on them, and we'll just figure those out at the end. I've got the bulk of it out the way though, which means I can now reassemble 95% of the keyboard, and then we'll do all these modifier keys and stuff like that afterwards. So let's bring my keyboard back in and now we're going to start piecing this guy back together so uh, if you're doing this it's strongly recommended to have a reference keyboard to one hand uh, just because it makes things a lot faster in my experience because no matter how well you think you know a keyboard you may uh, come a cropper actually i'm not going to use i was going to use this keyboard as my reference but this is a us layout keyboard so i'm actually going to grab a uk keyboard just to make sure that I don't add additional confusion to myself. Obviously, the quirk, the actual keys are the same. You know, all the letters are in the same place, but it's just for things like modifiers, your foot forward slash, your backslash, that kind of thing. So, right, let's start dropping keys back onto the deck. That's US2. I'm not sure if I'll have a UK2 or not. It's US2 because it's got the at symbol on it and UK keyboard should have double quote there. Tab. FN. Ooh, my FN key is there, I think. I'm gonna loose fit that. Well, actually I can, I can put it on properly. I've got the key puller. The key puller, as you saw when I disassembled the keyboard, makes it really quick to remove these things. F8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You know, these don't feel like the O-rings are going on. Yeah, these keys actually have slightly longer stems on them and the O-rings are getting pushed right to the top of the stem. If I compare this to an old key, notice how my old key has that cross on the bottom of it, which is stopping the O-ring from going too far, whereas the new ones don't have that. So th these are actually keycaps that may legitimately benefit from being double O-ringed in order to space them out a bit further. Um, because yeah, it really doesn't feel like my O-rings are doing anything at all with these new keycaps. So uh, that's a bit of a pain, but um, I'll solve that another time. Um, also, I need to figure out which is my FN key. I'm gonna put those that way around. I might have those the wrong way around. I think my insert and delete are the wrong way around. It's amazing how you forget Annoyingly, I don't have a, a real, a quote unquote, a real keyboard in front of me. There's a couple of these that we're going to correct at the end. Damn it. I picked a really bad keyboard to use as a reference. Right, there's my basics done. My reference keyboard was useless. I made a couple of mistakes through here. Um, however, also there are some keys that just definitely don't seem correct. I think I might have the wrong ones in the wrong places. That insert key, yeah, just some of these keys seem incorrect and we'll just go through them in a moment. Okay, right, let's do the extras for the ones that we missed. Uh, oh, there's two, that can go on. So these other keys that I'm now taking to one side are from the uh, numpad that I don't have. So we'll steal O-rings from those to fit to the missing keys. 
Okay, I need a short shift. There we go. They have given me two shift keys. So I've got a long shift for over there. And have they not given me a short shift? Oh, no. Oh, hold on a sec. Oh, that's backspace. Uh, we'll stick on backspace. We need that. Uh, right, what's that? That's the at symbol. Okay, so I need... What have I got available on the at symbols? Yeah, so this set is missing a couple of keys. I'm sad about that because they're really annoying ones as well. Um, right, we've got a two at. Yeah, we're going to have to do American layout. That sucks. Oh well. It is what it is. So I'll have to put on the American um, quotes key. That's fine. I'll get used to that. That's not the end of the world. Uh, right, what goes next to quotes? Uh, hash. Am I missing a hash key as well? I am. You know, this set is missing quite a couple of keys. That's a shame. I might be able to collect them just elsewhere. Or, I mean, uh, yeah, I could put on some of the old keys, but that will look a bit weird, I think. Right, delete and insert go the other way around. See what that does for me. Ah, oh, looks much better. Oh, there we go. That's done the trick. And now it looks correct. Okay, that's that sorted. Right, I need another control that goes in the bottom right. Yeah, they haven't given me the UK style hash and tilled ones. I'm going to have to improvise. So, what would be there on the American keyboard? Oh, the enter key would be. See, on an American keyboard, it would be like that. I'll use uh, I'll use this um, asterisk key. That'll do. Oh no, that's a numpad key. It sticks up. No, that's no good either. You know, you don't even notice how some of these keys are different. That's really frustrating that they've remembered to include a return key, but they haven't given me um, the uh, short shift or the hash keys. What a pain. Okay, how bad is it going to look if I put one of the old keycaps on? Ah, there's a short shift. Okay, let's stick my short shift back on and just see how bad that looks. Okay, so you can spot that shift key in the light, but it's not too bad, actually. I'd wager that on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not going to spot the difference there. And because I'm only hitting that with my pinky finger when I'm typing anyway, I don't think that's going to be an issue. So, okay, that's not the end of the world. I'm not too sad about that. And what about a hash key? There we go. And same deal there. That's not the end of the world. It's just one symbol key. I'm okay with that. I can see it with my eye there, but that's not going to bother me. The main feel on all the letters is there, and that's what I want. That feels super nice now. I'm happy. Yeah, so a bit of a disappointment that they made the effort to include, like, a couple of the UK keys, but not all of them. You know, it's just like that someone, uh, someone had a look at a UK layout, but didn't really look at a UK layout. And, uh, man... If you're in Europe and you need the accent keys and stuff like that, good luck. Good luck. And I tell you what, if you do know lots about keyboards, because I know there's some keyboard nerds out there that do all your custom keyboards and stuff like that, if you know a really good place to get custom key sets from, stick it in the comments. And uh, like, feel free to include links and stuff like that. 
Um, they'll get picked up by the spam filter, but I'll approve them because, you know, I'm trying to share knowledge here. So if you know a good place to find really good key sets, stick it in the links down below. Right, I'm now going to go through the remaining keys and I'm just going to take off any other um, O-rings that I put on because then it just means that I can put additional O-rings under some of the other modifier keys as I had before, just to quieten them down a bit. And I'll collect up all my spare keycaps and stick them back in the bag and have a collection of spare keycaps. Right, okay, there we go. So, one refurbished keyboard. Let's plug it in so the lights come on. Love the detachable, uh, love the detachable cable on this keyboard. There we go. So all done, um, and uh, as you can see, we've now got a nice shiny keyboard, and it's looking a little bit cleaner under there. The light looks a little bit better, and I can see between those keys that that's it's much cleaner now. It doesn't. I can't see dark patches between the keys, and under um, under the darker light at home, that's going to look fantastic. So. Yeah, I'm super happy about that. Good, all right, so we learned a thing. Um, and my caps lock key is working, that's great. So uh, so yeah, so word to the wise, again, be careful what keycaps you buy. I'm happy with these, but we did have to reuse a couple of them. So my shift and my pound keys have got the wrong keycaps on effectively. You can just see that in the light, but you know, I can live with that. Um, but all these letters, those all feel nice and new and not worn out now, so yeah, I'm happy. That was a fun little experiment. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, everyone. And um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye for now.